Hi everyone, hope you guys are all having a great day today. In today's video, I'm gonna cover the whole entire market in terms of Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and S&P 500, including the economic calendar. Now, before I get into the technical analysis portion, I'm gonna go over the economic calendar and go over a few of the numbers that were for today. So first thing is moving forward, on Monday, July 29th, 2024, there's nothing scheduled, but one thing to keep in mind for next week is we have the FOMC interest rate decision, so the Fed rate decision making on Wednesday. So look out for that for next week. And Jerome Powell as well has a press conference uh, next week right after. So that's at 2.30 p.m. And then 2 p.m. is the uh, decision making um, that comes out. So the thing is, though, for today, uh, it's kind of strange because the PCE inflation numbers that came out uh, essentially the Fed looks at the core PCE, which has uh, energy removed from it because from their viewpoint, it's pretty volatile and uh, it's not necessarily an accurate reading, but the core PCE is an accurate reading of inflation. And previously it was 2.6. This time around, they were expecting 2.6 and they got 2.6. But the media decided to advertise the previous 2.6, like the PCE year over year. So not the core PCE, but the PCE itself. Um, they went after the expected 2.5 we're showing a lower uh, year over year, which is convenient, I would say, um, because previously they looked at the core PC, especially since uh, energy was a big factor last time. And the number I believe was slightly higher two PC numbers ago, but um, I could be wrong either way. Uh, regardless, the market took it as a positive because the media outlets from what I saw were showing more of the 2.5 versus the 2.6 showing that it's uh, inflation is getting lowered. Now, this shows two directions for me in terms of path, because right now, in terms of the S&P and NASDAQ, they were showing downside. Now they're showing a little bit of a reversal upside, not too strong. This is based off MAC lines, and then still to the downside. So I'm expecting potentially, if the upside does hold true a little bit more of the short term, then Monday could still be pretty much an update, could possibly be the case. And then Tuesday, could be like a sideways slash potentially drop before inflation. And then the market based off the 2.5 seeing some uh, progress because mind you, by the way, US inflation right now, it's at 2.97%. And this is uh, based off of the June uh, the numbers that came up to, up to June 30th. And the Fed wants to get to 2%. So the narrative that the Fed has been uh, sharing the whole entire time is the fact that the interest rate cut, if, if a cut happens or increase happens, uh, Jerome Powell states that most likely, in his opinion, a rate cut will happen versus a rate increase. So um, the Fed is p basically pushing it further later on, delaying it, where the markets originally was expecting a few rate cuts this year, then it's dwindled down to one, potentially zero. And then the market is hoping for one for this year, but the Fed keeps pushing it to the point that it could be next year, that like potentially early next year or something like that, that the rate, cu rate cut will come in. So the market, in my opinion, kind of seemed a little bit positive today. As we saw, for example, uh, I'm just gonna look off SPY, like S&P 500 ETF and QQQ, NASDAQ ETF and Dow Jones. They were all up over a percent, right? And the Dow Jones jumped up 1.64%. Now the Dow Jones is a little bit different because it's 30 of them. But in terms of NASDAQ and S&P, they were up over a percent. And we saw a volatility index drop as well. Uh, it dropped 11.32%. So the market kind of took the numbers positively today. And um, because of that, I think what the market could be anticipating, this is just my opinion, by the way, is the market is anticipating a potential rate cut sooner rather than later from the Fed in terms of narrative. I don't think that will be delivered because again, in my opinion, uh, the F and, and f it was previously communicated multiple times that the Fed looks at core PC year over year. Obviously they look at all data points, not just one, right? So they're gonna look at the PC as well, year over year. But I think the main focus is gonna be core PC year over year. Uh, and if that's the case, it came in pretty much flat, as expected though, right, as expected. But with in, uh, inflation rate still, um, I might've said interest rate, I apologize, but inflation rate still being at 2.97% and they wanna get the 2% target, I, I think the Fed's gonna spin the narrative as still that, um, progress is being made, so on and so forth, but the, the rate cut is still going to be delayed. That's what I think. And the market might still take it as an okay neutral stance, but uh, I think what's going to happen is there might not be enough catalyst to carry the market to the upside potentially, and then we might see the pull down um, that the S&P and NASDAQ is showing because the Dow Jones uh, Dow Jones showed a reversal and seems pretty strong based off the MAC lines. MAC lines, by the way, in case you're um, new to the channel or in terms of um, indications, it shows you if you're a bearish or bullish movement, 
and so on and so forth. But for the Dow Jones, it's pretty much just showing upside, um, which is kind of strange because S&P and NASDAQ show a little bit of the upside short term kind of thing, potentially for the Monday, potentially, and then continuous downside after that. Um, but again, the Wednesday could throw everything off. Just like today, I usually don't like to base information ba- before the data comes out. Um, you can see coincidentally today too that it went up regardless of the MEC lines and all that stuff. Um, so if, same thing for Wednesday. Leading up to it, the markets could head down on the Tuesday at the end of the trading day. But uh, um, on the Wednesday itself, you pretty much have to wait until 2 p.m. when the Fed decides what they're going to post out on their decision-making notes, right? Um, but either way, we're going to look at the technical portion and uh, we're going to look at SPY, which is an ETF for S&P 500. We closed at $544.44 and uh, pretty much uh, spiked up at the same level as pretty much last time. So the previous trading day, around the same ballpark of 547 and some change. But if the MAC lines do uh, be, uh, seem to be valid in terms of the upside, potentially the Monday and maybe the Tuesday, maybe. I would say more the Tuesday at the end of the trading day, the markets might come down potentially unless the markets are very optimistic on what the Fed will say. And then where Wednesday leading up to it, the markets will just be neutral waiting for the decision making, right? But um, if we were to go up to the upside based off MAC lines, we're gonna see resistance at pretty much about the 545 to 546 range, $546, $545. That's basically horizontally read it right about here showing resistance. And then the next level that I think we would go up to. So this is again, if the MAC lines hold true, we would be going up to, obviously we're gonna see resistance at the 547 by the way, because of these two spikes ups right about here. But I think ultimately meeting at this moving average right about here, this crosses over right here with the resistance line. There's a bunch of touch points, one, two, if I'll zoom in, you can see them like spike ups, one, two, resistance, a little bit of consolidation resistance there, resistance right there. There's a small dip, uh, support dip right there, one, two, technically that one's one, but that's two right there. And then there's a support dip right there as well. So it's resistance and support and plus the moving average crossing over. So that's about $548 and some change. And technically that could be the limit. That could be the limit unless the market is very optimistic because it could jump quite a bit though, because even 544 to 548 is not a crazy jump. Then the next level, I think in my opinion, even though this has only two touch point data points, technically it might have a little bit more from here, but one, two strong data points to downward trend resist line potentially, which coincidentally crosses over with the horizontal resistance right about here. One, two, I believe there's a couple support lines somewhere I saw last time. I think it was right about here or something like that. Um, and then almost a support dip right there too as well. And that's at the 550 and some change, which almost by the time we get there, I think the moving average would probably meet us anyway. So 550 and some change, I think that'll be the max with a doubt. So that's based off the downward trend resistance line crossing over with the horizontal resistance and then potentially moving average around roughly about 550 and some change, give or take. Um, but I think that would be the utmost max. Um, if that the 548 and some change doesn't even hold us down, and then that would be pretty much the whole entire day slash if the markets by it's Tuesday wouldn't be really good to react to right now. We would have to see how Monday reacts overall. But if the if if it does hold up to the upside based off the MEC lines, like I stated, and then starts coming down, I think this zone would hold us right about here, which would be about $542 and some change. Again, this is resistance slash support. Yeah, there's some false breakouts, but then there's actual resistance price points or um, uh, touch points. And then same thing with here. Yeah, there's some false breakouts, but there's actual support touch points as well. And again, that's 542 and some change. Now, if the MSC lines don't hold true, and then the market is actually reacting to the downside potentially, um, then we would head down to the lower levels. And essentially, basically, we could see support on like the five, 537, like we saw before, and then the 539. So somewhere between 540, 537. But I think, um, like I've stated in the past, I think two videos, uh, because indications later on are pointing to the downside and this depends though because if the feds decide to cut interest rates sooner rather than later then the markets will go up in my opinion but if they don't and they uh, say that they're going to pause longer and so on and so forth and the market doesn't take it favor- favorably then we're heading down to this zone in my opinion which uh, is pretty much where we see resistance and support um, a couple times and that's about 531 and some change I'm, I'm assuming that we would see a false breakout to 530 anyway clean number and some change and then will it hold? Debatable. We have to see how fast it goes down. But I think we're going to come back to this zone, in my opinion. Um, but that's for the S&P 500. Now for QQQ, or actually I'll cover the Dow Jones first, then I'll cover QQQ. But for Dow Jones, it's showing upside. Um, 
we have this upward trend resist line dating back since 2021. And I'll just show it about here real quickly. So one, two, three, four, and then there's a fifth one right here. And then technically these two break off into two each. So you can see right about here, two touch points each, right? The resistance level. Then there's a support level, but I don't think we're gonna see it. Cause again, the MEC line is indicating upside for the Dow Jones. Not necessarily it's gonna be true, but that's what it's indicating. So pretty much trying to, it's, in my opinion, even though we close at, not even though, but we close at 40,589 points, we're heading basically up to 49, uh, 41,000, and then gonna have to pass the all-time high, but before that we have about 41,200. I'm assuming this somewhat um, consolidation tops, top end might hold a little bit, but 41,200, and then the all-time high of 41,366 points, give or take. Now, if it, if it slightly goes up, right? Like let's say for example, um, it goes up to 41,000 and comes back down, uh, anticipation for the Fed decision-making kind of stuff. I'm expecting it to be within this zone right about here in terms of somewhat consolidating, which is about 40,700 points to 39,800 points, give or take, because basically the moving average could kind of hold it a little bit, but then there's the moving averages here plus the resistance level slash could act as support. Like we saw, I think right about here, you can see a little bit of support dip right there too. Um, given that pretty much the moving average is at 40,400, 40,200, and then 40,300. So it's pretty much could hold up there leading up to the Fed decision making, right? Um, but again, I think Monday is just going to be an update. And then Tuesday, if it does come down, it probably pretty much hover around these price points. Um, and then worst case scenario, drop down to 39,680 points, give or take. Um, but we'll see. Again, most likely I'm expecting money to be up day. And if it does come down, it'll hover around those price points. Uh, now for the NASDAQ slash looking at ETF QQQ. Um, basically, same thing as the S&P 500 showing upside, and uh, but further along the lines downside later on. Uh, but again, it could be altered by the Fed decision making on Wednesday, like I stated earlier. And if we were to go up right now, mind you, we close at $462.97. And we are... It's, it's kind of strange because it could drop quite a bit and get to this channel, what I'm expecting. And this channel is between uh, $448 to $433. But I don't think that necessarily will happen. Actually, I don't personally, I don't think that's going to happen on Monday. If anything, it would be most likely after the Fed decision making will get stuck in this channel potentially, potentially, right? Um, but before that, I don't think so. I expect some drops before the decision making, but not that crazy. Um, but if we go based off MAC lines and go to the upside, so on and so forth, then what the first zone I think that could hold us a little bit in terms of upside resistance is right about here. So maybe I should draw it out a little bit. This was uh, this line represents right about here. Um, you probably can't see. Let me just zoom out a little bit. So there's a 2010 upward trend resistance line dating back again since 2010. Yeah, we broke through in 2020 to 2022, but came back underneath it and then tried to break through it. You might not be able to tell because there's multiple lines, but the 2010 line, we tried to break through it, did not. And then we broke through it as of recent, which is this point right about here. So this is the 2010 line and broke it through right here. And uh, coincident coincidentally, it kind of coincides with the spike up right about here. So it's pretty much looking at Four hundred sixty-eight dollars, give or take. That I don't think that necessarily hold us as resistance, but I'm just saying like that could be a resistance price point. Then the next zone with the moving average and horizontal support, you're looking at four hundred seventy-two dollars or four hundred seventy-three basically, yeah, four hundred seventy-three dollars. And I think that would kind of pretty much hold us um, because when I adjusted the line, the line for some reason is not adjusted right now, but it kind of crosses over. Let me see right about here. Yeah. Okay. So. 473, but then the top end downward trend resistance line right over here, it has one, two, three, four touch points. It's showing 474. So 473 could hold a little bit, 474, and I don't think we're gonna go any higher. Um, anything is possible at the end of the day, but in my opinion, I think because the longer indications are showing downside, even though the shorter term indications are showing upside, I think Monday would be maxed out at the 474. I guess maybe 475, somewhere between 473 to 474, uh, for, sorry, 473 to 475. More the case, in my opinion, 473, to be honest. But if we want to touch this downtrend resistance line, most likely probably be held up to it anyway. So 475 and some change. And then start heading down maybe midday Tuesday, so on and so forth. And if we were to head down, uh, yeah, this could hold us support the 465. I don't think it will personally. More of the zone of 460 in general. And then head down to 
pretty much maybe bouncing off the four, four, 448, but ultimately at one point come down this channel, but somehow head towards it because I don't think it'll get down to this channel until the Wednesday, in my opinion. Again, the channel is somewhere between $448 to $433. Um, but again, if the news on Wednesday is good, where the Fed states that the interest rates cut will come sooner rather than later, then this won't be um, a concern. Markets will reverse to the upside and then probably most likely break through this downward trend resistance line, breaking through the $475 and then getting to these moving averages right about here, probably in the 483 zone, give or take. But I'm just looking for 483 right now as of today, Friday, July 24, uh, 26, 2024, um, because these moving averages obviously will be adjusted by Wednesday. Um, but either way, oh, and then the upward trend resistance line 2010 is you're looking at $477 in um, some change too, right? So you're gonna have to break through that anyway too. Um, but that's basically it for today's video. Thanks again for watching. I do appreciate it. If you found it helpful, consider dropping a like. It does help the channel. So thank you so much for that. I do appreciate it. I do post these videos daily. So I highly encourage you to follow and subscribe so you can be notified when I do upload the next video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace.